people who think entering the USA without permission of the government is okay, but wouldn't want an undocumented resident in their home and gentlemen. This is the fourth in a series demonstrating that most of the high-ranking pukes in Washington have no desire to secure our southern border, but instead want open borders and shamnesty for illegal pieces of trash so they can get cheap labor or more votes. I was urged to do this particular video by a friend of mine, Jeff, also known as JDG Gearhead on YouTube. He has gone to the trouble of roughly calculating what it would cost to build a wall 20 feet high and three feet thick on our southern border. He's made sure of actually overestimating the cost of this wall and given the cost of a wall 2,500 miles long due to geographical difficulties that will certainly occur during the process of constructing this structure. Jeff also made it clear that he's willing to discuss details of this with anyone, so you can either discuss this that here on this video or see him as, on his channel. I have all the relevant links underneath the video. As per usual, he elucidated this uh, information to me in an email. We've also briefly discussed gaps in the wall for wildlife, which either be could either be 10 or 15 uh, 10 or 15 foot gap in the wall, where it overlaps for say 50 feet or so. It could easily be guarded, and larger wildlife would be able to make it through. We could also put a 50 foot gap in the wall in areas where the border patrol has so-called operational control of the area. This would easily allow for the area to be monitored and allow wildlife to pass through undeterred. The final cost of two 20-foot walls, three feet thick, with a road in between. He didn't talk about the road, but that would probably be part of it as well. With a road between for the Border Patrol to drive on would cost roughly $60 billion, give or take, depending on how inflation skyrockets due to a possible QE3. Two 20-foot high walls, three feet thick, would be quite a deterrent. It's obvious that all the Border Patrol agents we've added has not worked. We need this wall as a deterrent. They're still coming through, even though we've added and added and added. We've gone from 10,000 to 17,000 recently. Considering Congress passed legislation almost five years ago supposedly designed to, addre designed to address this issue, we need this wall. While we've made strides in arresting illegals and building a fence along the U.S.-Mexico line, the Border Patrol only has, quote, operational control, unquote, of 44% of the southern border, and of that, only 15% is considered airtight, according to a new general or a new government accountability office report. The GAO said that the Mexican border with Texas has the most holes, especially between Fort Hancock and Brownsville, where 70% to 90% of the state line is at the two lowest levels of protection, monitored and low-level monitored. The GAO said that efforts to stop illegal immigrants from crossing there were poor. Border Patrol reported that these two levels of control were not acceptable for border security, said the GAO. Of the nearly 2,000 miles separating the U.S. and Mexico, 873 are under operational control of the Border Patrol. Homeland Insecurity Secretary Janet Napolitano released a budget document back in February that indicates that the Department of Homeland Insecurity does not intend to put a single additional mile of the U.S. border under effective control in either fiscal year 2011 or 2012. According to Napolitano, or as Court of Larry calls her, Incompetano, Incompetano's budget plan, the Border Patrol had 1,007 miles of the U.S. border under effective control at the end of fiscal year 2010, and DHS aims to stick with exactly that number through this year and next. And of course, there's some discrepancy about what is exactly operational control. It's obvious we have some problems either way you look at it. The 3,311 page document released by Incompetano, quote, Congressional Budget Justification Fiscal Year 2012, end quote, also says DHS does not intend to add a single additional Border Patrolman in fiscal year 2012 after adding 859 this year. Nor, the document says, does DHS intend to deploy a single additional Border Patrol agent to either the U.S.-Mexico or U.S.-Canadian border in fiscal year 2012, capping Border Patrol deployments at the two borders at this year's level. So, our government needs to get on the stick. This is a purposeful neglect of our southern border. It goes beyond general government incompetence. Story number two. Nearly half of the nation's estimated 12 million illegal immigrants actually entered the U.S. legally but overstayed their visa, according to a new federal report. That's because the agency responsible for keeping the nation safe, the Department of Homeland Insecurity, 
of course we were safe for how long without the Department of Homeland Insecurity I don't know why we had to add another bureaucracy the Department of Homeland Insecurity can't keep track of immigrants who remain in the US after their visas expire this clearly creates a huge national security issue because terrorists can plot more attacks from within in fact dozens of foreigners convicted of terrorism since the 2001 attacks had overstayed their visas according to the report which was published by the investigative arm of Congress known as the Government Accountability Office. The GAO launched its probe after learning from an independent study that four to five and a half million immigrants had entered the country legally and overstayed their authorized periods of admission. In the course of the probe, GAO investigators interviewed a number of high-ranking Homeland Security officials, visited various field offices, and reviewed a mountain of documents. They found that the Department of Homeland Insecurity's program to identify visa violators by comparing entry and exit data is inefficient and can only process around half the potential overstays it detects. Currently, the system has a backlog of about 1.6 million suspected foreigners who remain in the U.S. past their visa period. The probe found some could be very some could very well be Islamic extremists. Story number three. The number of cases awaiting resolution by immigration judges reached 272,022 at the end of March and continues to climb. A top Justice Department official told a Senate Judiciary Committee at, told at, at a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, excuse me, Executive Office for Immigration Review Director Juan Osuna told the Senate panel Wednesday, this was back in May, that immigration courts, quote, received more cases over the past couple of years than any time in our history, unquote. A large and growing proportion of the cases, quote, are related to aliens who are detained while they are, while they are awaiting their hearings. Did you get that? A large and growing proportion of the cases, quote, are related to aliens who are detained while they are awaiting their hearings, unquote. He continued, quote, these detained cases continue to be a priority for EIOR in large part because they involve individuals who have criminal convictions that may make them deportable from the U.S. End quote. In his written testimony, Asuna stated at the end of fiscal year 2010, 262,622 proceedings were pending in the immigration courts, marking an increase of more than 40,000 proceedings pending over the end of fiscal year 2009. This undermines somewhat the push for a guest worker program, which I would be in favor of if the government wasn't so pathetic at performing its duties and wasn't in the tank for open borders. It's apparent a lot of these guests wouldn't go back. We need the federal government to rein in these sanctuary cities and cut off anyone who is not a legal resident from any and all welfare benefits. It's only fair. Story number four. Department of Homeland Insecurity Secretary Janet Incompetano told the Senate Judiciary Committee that has oversight over the Department of Homeland Security that her agency halted the deportation of only 900 illegal immigrants in fiscal year 2010. She did admit that, that, that the figure could be higher because it excludes deferred action granted to illegal immigrants for humanitarian reasons. Not surprisingly, Madam Secretary never indicated how much higher that figure could be, which may lead to many, many to conclude that she purposely deceived federal lawmakers. It turns out that the uh, Hussein Obama administration halted the deportation of 34,448 illegal immigrants in fiscal year 2010, according to Homeland Security figures obtained independently by Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa, who sits on the Judiciary Committee. After the Senate hearing, which took place last month in Washington, D.C., Incompetano's own staff corrected her atrocious lie, according to Senator Grassley's press secretary, who provided Judicial Watch with the accurate number. According to Homeland Insecurity figures provided to Senator Grassley's staff, the combined defer action, deferred action and paroles of illegal immigrants in 2010 fiscal year amounted to 34,448. Judicial Watch has sued the Department, Department of Homeland Insecurity to obtain records detailing the stealth amnesty plan because the agency has ignored a federal public records request that dates back to July 2010. So they're dragging their feet. Most transparent administration ever? I think not. Story number five and our final one. 
The Department of Justice distorts figures to hide from Congress pervasive corruption in the nation's immigration court system, which allows deportable aliens to evade hearings without consequences, and more than one million removal orders to be ignored. Adding insult to injury, U.S. taxpayers finance the drove of appeals filed by illegal immigrants deported for criminal convictions and fraudulent marriages. From 2000 to 2007, Americans doled out $30 million for aliens' court costs. According to a new report authored by a former immigration court judge, Mark H. Metcalf in South Florida, considered to be a hotbed in the system. Even after the 2001 terrorist attacks, 50% of all aliens who are free pending trial disappeared, according to figures provided in the judge's report. Between 2005 and 2006, the number of aliens who failed to appear at their court hearings grew to 59%. The DOJ deceptively reported the figure as only 39% by combining aliens who were free pending trial with those in custody who were forced by authorities to appear in court. That allowed the so-called bail jumpers to appear as a smaller part of the overall figure. The agency also told Congress that immigration courts rule in favor of aliens only 20% of the time when in fact it's 60% and that aliens appeal deportation orders in only 8% of cases when the figure is actually 98%. Many more examples are included in the judge report, which is linked below, which refers to the DOJ's findings as, as a sham. So as bad as Bush was on immigration, Hussein Obama is even worse, and he has an agenda. Some Republicans want this for cheap labor. Some businessmen want it for cheap labor. The Democrats want it for more voters, and it's obvious that pandering to them is not working. They are not obeying the laws. They're overstaying their visas. Many of them are just ignoring uh, summons to appear in court. They have nothing to lose. So I think Jeff's wall is a good idea, and it's worth it. And it, will it solve the problem? Totally no. But combine that with cutting off their welfare benefits, it would deter a lot of them, and we wouldn't have as many of them here. Have a nice day. And don't thank me now.